Uh, good morning. It is 43 minutes after 8 o'clock. And joining us uh, in studio this morning from the uh, Chavez County Extension Office, uh, we have, of course, Actually, I think is this the, we you were on the air, I Drew. Was, and you were gone. Yeah, that was the day that yeah that was the day uh, Drew Garnett, uh, who's the uh, the ag I guess would be yes, sir, ag extension agent here yes. for Chavis County. Yes, and Tamara Schubert back with us, of course, yes, here, sir. Uh, who handles uh, all the home ex home ex side of things. I know they have official titles, but my brain's not smart enough to to remember. <laughs> To remember those, and then uh, we have Bailey Sweeney as well, who's uh, your 4-H officer, right? In in, in the 4-H, and and sounds like you do a, a whole like a little bit of everything in 4-H. Yes, is that, sir. that pretty safe to say? Yeah, I do a lot. Okay, so what's your favorite part of 4-H? Like, what's like if you? Because I know there's so for people that don't know, everyone thinks 4-H and they think of showing animals at the fair, which you're not wrong. That's very much part of 4-H, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. They Absolutely. really, they really. Um, the, I mean, when it comes to learning about like government procedure, parliamentary procedure, learning, uh, you know, the science of, of the ag industry, um, and, and, and then just going off into computers, shooting sports, things that have not one iota of really anything to do with the ag industry, 4-H covers all that. So, so, uh, so, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. That's uh, okay. Well, so what's your, what's your, uh. Like, what's your go-to? What's, like, what's your most favorite thing you do in 4-H? Um, the main thing that I do is steers and okay. my horses, my okay. rodeo and stuff. That's, like, okay. my all-time favorite thing. So you don't show do. the horses. You ride the horses and show the steers. Well, I can show horses and rodeo. Oh, okay. So. So what do you do in rodeo? Like, the, the barrel racing? or I do barrels, poles, and goat tying, and I'm trying to get into steer stopping and breakaway. Oh, wow. So you're kind of... You got. You ever get on things that buck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like horses. I'm or trying bulls. to get my mom to let me bronc ride, but yeah, <laughs> she's still saying no. I'm about to but. say, uh, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm an adult, though, I'm gonna be like, go ride the bronc, and after I'll tell her, hey, I rode a bronc. She'll be like, ah, you did what? <laughs> Like I got a video, you want to see? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so let me ask you: plans uh, after school and things? What are you, what are you do, wanting to do now? What or what are you doing now? I should say. Um, like during spring break or just in just like in future general. plans. College. I'm wanting to be a veterinarian. I want to go to N- NMSU. Okay. Um, for college. Okay. And because there's a really good program over there. For veterinary science, I guess that would be the. the... I have a old friend that goes there. Um, and he's really enjoying it. Okay. So hopefully I can make it there okay. with the 4-H career I have now. Now, um, but with your 4-H career and, and um, expertise, you, you, you're kind of dealing with larger animals. Um, as a vet, would you want to deal with the farm size animals, or would you want to do, you know, the cats and dogs or all of the above? I want to do all of it okay. because a lot of the times you can't find vets that just do because you find vets here that they just do large animals sure. or they just do or small they just do animals. The small ones. Or you you might find it very rare that they do all of them, and I want to be able to do all of that. Okay. And so you want to be the one stop shop for veterinary needs. Yeah, I nice. want to also be an equine dentist, so I okay. can get certified for that when I'm 16. So brush horse teeth. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what it is. But I feel like horse teeth detail. are big, so there should be a lot of acreage of uh, brushing there. It, it is. <laughs> Do they like a uh, mint? <laughs> Do they use a floral? You don't really get to have a taste. It's not really a toothbrush. It's more yeah. like a drill type thing. I imagine by the horse, it, it depends. Some probably love it. Some probably hate it. You know, kind of. they're they're doped up. So oh, they don't really care. Oh, it's not like you just walk up and say, "Hey, Wilbur," and start. Yeah, you know, kind of. it's a process. I'm a city kid. I don't know nothing about animals, as my evidence is showing here. But uh, well, very cool. Well, welcome to the show here. And uh, thank you. Good to enjoy your spring break. Kinda. Kinda. Going slow. Is it? I'm ready for school to be over. I wish they would have just powered through it. Ah. Uh, so well, I can get here faster. I got a feeling you're going to be in the minority with your uh, fellow peers at your school. There, <laughs> I got a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> so what's uh, what, what's going on through uh, the extension office right now? Is it is a lot of 4-H stuff? I know uh, this is diabetic 
cooking season, isn't it, right now? All of the above. Yes. So this is our last month of enrollment for 4-H. So our deadlines are March 31st. Okay. If they're interested in doing fairs or competing with anything 4-H, they need to get signed up. Okay. So call us at the office and do that. All right. Um, we do have some programs. We're partnering with the library. Um, so we're doing some youth programming. So if you've got kids between the ages of 5 and 18 okay. and want some free programs, okay. come see us at the library. Our next one is April the 9th okay. at 10 o'clock in the morning and they're learning and making all kinds of rockets. Nice. So they can come join us at that. And then we are in the middle of diabetic cooking school. Yes. So Kitchen Creations is going on right now. And the class for this month is completely full. Okay, good. Yeah, but good we are having... back and take advantage of it. We are. We are having another virtual session next month that okay. they can get signed up on. Is it getting by popular demand? You're going to have to... You're getting more opportunities because... We are. The demand is... is yeah. and, and let's face it. You guys haven't really been able to do this for two years, uh, and and it was popular before yes. COVID and everything. So I imagine there's been a lot of people that have been diagnosed with diabetes or, or pre-diabetic over the last two years, and they've been anxious to, to learn. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure they tried on their own and things. But, you know, you, you probably find one or two things, but it's always great when you can learn from people that this is what they do. This is, it is. They, 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 they're experts, and, and, they're, and they get that uh, you don't want to eat uh, just, you know, cauliflower by itself for the rest of your life. There's ways to make it uh, pleasurable. <laughs> it is. It is. It's great. It's a four-part cooking class. In the last three sections, they get hands-on cooking. So yeah. they get to try the recipes out and see how those different vegetables work for Yeah. Them. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, uh, diabetic, di- getting diagnosed with diabetes, that, you know, that's probably feels like a, like a death sentence for somebody at first. And you're like, oh, great. Now it's no more pies, no more cakes, no more sugars, no more nothing the rest of your life. It's like, eh, yes and no. It I, teaches you how to do it in balance. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. There's ways to substitute to get the same sati- uh, sensations or the same taste palates um, without using the, the full-blown sugar or without using uh, something that's loaded in carbs that you can do that's uh, different. You know, We all love pizza. And uh, and to be honest, the cauliflower pizza crusts aren't bad. Like you know what I mean? There is is it's not exact because nothing's exact. You know I mean it's it's you're taking a vegetable and, and you know that a wheat product and <laughs> taking something that's not like wheat and making it like wheat. You know right. what I mean? So it's not going to be exact, but but yeah, it's a good taste and it's really your you know as as someone you're like you know what that I could get behind that and eat that you know now. You got to remember what you put on top of the pizza too. You load it down with a bunch of <laughs> vegetables. You put vegetables on top of pizza. <laughs> you know, I I know that there's so many different parts of a pig that are delicious. We don't need to put all of them on a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> But but you can but so obviously you can't sign up for the the one classes. But to get on the virtual here, you probably want to do that like right now because that'll fill up pretty quick. Too. Right. It's- so the virtual you can visit diabetes.nmsu.edu and get signed up for those classes. But it's been so popular and highly demanded right now that we are working on some future dates, maybe fall, late okay. summer for okay. another in person. Okay. And then of course, um, if if in between classes and things, if maybe you're just recently diagnosed and and you're looking for information resources, Tamara can help you out and put you in right directions, websites, literature, things like that. Absolutely. In the meantime, while you're kind of you know waiting to sign up for a class, or or if you missed out here and you're going to sign up in the fall. But, um, you know, because obviously you've got a life to live and, and you can't, there's a reason why. It doesn't why, wait. Yeah, it does not wait. So uh, work with your doctors, you know, you know, get on those plans, take your medicines, do your, you know, eating right and picking, exercising all, you know, it, it, it's a whole cocktail of things to really help there. But, but um, let, you know, in the meantime, don't hesitate to reach out to Tam or the staff there and say, you know, what, I, I'm looking, where, where's some good resources to, to, to point me where I can start doing some research and on good eating choices that that I can get with and get behind. And, and, and you've got a lot of those kind of reasons. We do. Yep. do. What about the ag side, Drew? Is there anything we need to uh, get uh, fo- on folks, uh, folks' radar about? Well, I mean, right now is the time of year the plants are, well, obviously with this morning being cooler, we don't think of it as warming up. Yeah, but with I'm sure uh, our trees are nice and confused yeah, right now. <laughs> everything is, but it is warming up, so we are looking at, Starting uh, later this month, some of our fertilizing applications, if you are um, looking to take care of your yard or garden or trees. Okay. Uh, but coming up in April, we are going to have a ranch workshop here in Chavis County. It's going to be a collaboration between Roosevelt 
Eddie, Lee, and ourselves. Okay. And we're going to be hosting it here at the uh, uh, fairgrounds. Okay. And that will be April 26th. We're going to have a beef quality assurance certification in the morning. Okay. We're going to have um, some marketing strategies for okay. your livestock. So really it's mm-hmm. uh, the – the um because a lot of, I'm sure ranchers, you know, a lot of them are grown up into it. And so they, they may know the day-to-days of, of running the ranch, but not the unsexy parts like the the business side of it a little bit. And these, it sounds like this really helps well, uh, and educate and understand that side of things. Yeah, and we're just bringing new information to them. They Many of these ranchers have their system down that they've been utilizing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's always things cha- changing in the market changing in regulation in day and age i mean yeah, especially in this day and age especially after the last two years with everything that's gone on so we like to bring that information to them and so we're going to be hosting this event uh, obviously beef quality assurance mm-hmm. program the marketing strategies but we're also going to be having some live demos after the lunch which there will be a provided lunch um we're going to have taking it beef for <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it will be beef. Uh, so the beef council is going to be sponsoring the uh, you had me the beef. lunch. So it is beef, <laughs> and uh, so then. But we will be having some uh, uh, lecture on sheep and goats as well. Cool. But then also flight They're tasty control too. and <laughs> predator control. They are. They are very much so. <laughs> I think I got a dirty look from. Uh, <laughs> it's like, wait, man, I show those. <laughs> oh, I, don't care. I eat them. No. <laughs> but, but in all seriousness, actually. Uh, Predominantly, what's been growing around here lately is uh, uh, interest in hair sheep, which are for meat. Okay. And that is, uh, we're not 100% sure if it what the cause is, but there's been a higher demand for hmm. sheep on on the on the menu. Interesting. And so you did see that steep decline after World War II because all of our boys in the Pacific were being fed so much mutton. Yeah, they when were they like, got home. They I'm said, not seeing no another months, one again. No yeah, I get that. <laughs> but uh, over the last uh, three years, you've really seen an increase. Uh, you've had grocery stores like H E B saying they can't get enough to keep it on really? the shelf. So, and I would imagine too that that you know. Beef prices and things probably impact some of that. People looking like, well, maybe I need to find another meat here instead and, of buying steak all the time. And that so was that, definitely one of the concerns with during COVID when so much of our meat was off the shelf. Mm-hmm. People were turning to other meats that they normally didn't uh, see or utilize. I actually love that. On. Oh, You know, I too. love that kind of thing. You know, it's like there is so – we should not have a food problem in this world. I mean, there is – I mean, just like fish. There's so many fish types – that we could eat that people don't get into for various reasons and stuff, you know. Uh, but they're quite tasty if you if you know what you're doing with them and stuff. So I think even like uh, people are gonna really look at me weird now, but but like bugs and stuff. There's some, you know, there's there's what? something to some of that, you know. I mean, I wouldn't want to eat it every day, but you know, there 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 are other things other than steak, chicken, and pork to eat. You know, look, just... a, a, as the entomologist, I'm on board, but I, I think I think it's gonna be a hard sell for most people. Uh, and you know the U.S. is one of the few countries that doesn't utilize insects in yeah. their diet. So, but not that I'm necessarily recommending. I've had it. like fried crickets when, every once in a while. They ain't bad. You like, know. Oh yeah, they're I'm not. Gonna they're sit not down bad, and eat them all the time. But if you but, have yeah. a pile of fried crickets and a, a pound of steak right there, I'm definitely going to be going after that steak. Yeah. I mean, well, I'm a fat guy. I'll eat that steak and then fall off the crickets right after. <laughs> But, uh, but definitely, now, uh, for registering for this, is uh, I'm imagine, so, uh, yeah, sooner the better. Registration will be up on our website, um, f- with our extension website. It'll also be on Roosevelt, Lee, and Eddie's website okay, as good. well. Uh, if you want to come into the office, you can do that as well. Um, and if you have any questions, registration is not up just yet, but we should have that up and running here fairly soon. Okay, look for it next week or so yes, up on there. Yes. And, and call if you have any questions. Yes, definitely. Always call if you have any questions. If you have any questions about anything, uh, even beyond this workshop that we're going to be doing. Very good. Good deal. Um, we got about two minutes here left. What else is there we want to make sure we get out there? Bailey, is there anything you wanted to share while you're here anything anybody who say hi to any family members anything like that i'm sure a lot of family well yeah. probably just my dad to be honest with you yeah. <laughs> he's the only one that really knows that i'm on here ah the rest are surprises <laughs> kind of told one friend but okay. that's pretty much we can it. show them later we have our video yeah. sides so you can watch them so they or they might see it later stumble across yeah i'll, I'll make right. sure tanner puts your face prominent on the screen oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I think I'm fine. And and I was listening to your last program, and you were talking about scholarships and students. We do have a list of scholarships at our office. Excellent. If students are interested, there are 
There are a lot of scholarships out there right now. We're coming up close to the deadline to be applying for this next year. And there's a lot of scholarships people don't think of that are available here in the community. Well, and I'm glad you mentioned that because the extension um, clubs here in Chavez County, they have several available to students right now, and their deadline is April the 22nd. Okay. So that was sent out to all the high school counselors this last week. It's also available in our office. Very good. So if they're interested, I think juniors and seniors, those even that are in college right now looking to return, um, there are several options for them available. Awesome. So please, yeah, kids apply yeah. yeah i don't care if you're not even sure i mean that's there's so many scholarships out there that yeah. uh that don't even get awarded because no one applies to yeah them. and in some cases you can apply to something and even though you don't fully qualify if nobody else applies that organization has to give sure. out that money every that money's year. Gotta go somewhere. so they're going to give you that money if nobody else qualified absolutely applies. it's it, always worth applying i guarantee you won't get it if you don't apply and uh, you got nothing but a chance to do it if you do so yeah. and i don't care how well off you are everybody can use more money yeah, always for always i mean in college it's getting more and more expensive so absolutely um give out the phone number to the extension office if anybody has any questions about anything we talked about here 622-3210 very good and of course um it's through new mexico state absolutely so, so you can find the extension office and everything on facebook but a lot of it's through nmsu yes so uh is it like nmsu extension or something like that so you yeah you can get on to <coughs> nmsu look at their extension it's actually going to give you every county in the state so okay. you can always click on us um we do it does take you to our individual websites and like you said we are on facebook and stuff as well very good or come by on chisholm there the the office there that's so, it very good well thank you guys appreciate it and uh Congratulations on your offers on uh, your leadership roles here, and uh, thank you. And um, I'll uh, hopefully, I guess, down the road here, I'll bring my dog to you here, and, or my cats. I got cats. So. Okay, there you, go. you already have a client. <laughs> <laughs> I got multiple clients. There you go. Well, thank you guys. Have a great weekend. Okay. Thank you.